Hey everyone, back to you in today's second video. I did a video earlier on looking at the weather for the coming few days. Be uh, this evening's video is going to be looking at the severe and historic freeze of uh, January 1987. This could well have been the single uh, coldest spell of weather uh, since 1740 across uh, many parts of the country, particularly England and Wales. Certainly was the coldest single spell of weather across uh, England and Wales uh, of the 20th century. But I think, yeah, it's probably, uh, we probably saw the severest cold uh, for a single spell of weather doesn't last very long, but a few days of the severest cold uh, since 1740. So an incredible uh, sort of uh, spell of weather uh, you're going to witness in a moment. Now, before I get on with that, I just want to mention a few things. The historic video uh, would not be possible uh, without Trevor Harley and his personal weather website. Also, it, it would not be possible without the historic archive at wetcentral.d. Uh, both these elements really bring the videos together and make the video. So I would not be able to do these historic videos uh, without Trevor Harley and without Wet Central Dot D. You can find the link to both of those websites on my uh, links page. Trevor Harley has information going back, well, thousands of years, really, in some instances. Uh, incredible resource of information. Uh, Wet Central Dot D has uh, charts going back to January the 1st, 1871. So you can while away many a, a happy hour at those two websites, incredible resources of information uh, on a soggy uh, weekend. Uh, you can uh, spend many a uh, happy hour there, as I have. Um, and of course, had a lot of those soggy weekends uh, this winter, haven't we? So do check out those websites, and thanks very much to both of those websites. Uh, these historic videos that I do at gasweatherthis.com would not be possible uh, without them. Also, what I want to say about my eye, I've got uh, a, quite a uh, sort of painful eye at the moment. That's why I'm squinting a little bit at the uh, camera. It's nothing to worry about, but uh, hope it's not too off putting. But that's what's going on. Uh, I'm getting it sorted out hopefully soon. Uh, but I had shingles over Christmas and it's still sort of uh, it got into my eye and it's still a little bit uh, sore. So that's what's going on there. And finally, the advertising. There's video ads on my pages at gasworthies.com. If you press play on video ads, you'll be supporting gasworthies.com. And uh, thanks very much for doing that. So we're going to start off uh, the look at January 1987 uh, with the start of the winter, the 1st of December 1986. Just to put things into context, it was a pretty mild December, uh, really an Atlantic-driven month. Uh, high pressure setting up to the south of the country, low pressure out to the west and the north here on the 1st. And we're bringing in mild uh, southwest winds. In fact, it's a very mild start to the month. As we go through to the 4th of December, we've got this very long fetch southwest. We're dragging up tropical air uh, from the Azores. Temperatures up to 13, 14 degrees widely across many parts of the country, although very wet up in the north, and it's actually the wettest uh, December um, of the 20th century across Scotland, so a really wet month, but also uh, quite a mild month. And of course, mild Decembers, other than uh, 1981, which was cold, uh, were uh, something that was quite common during the 1980s, a period of cold winters, uh, but generally quite mild uh, Decembers. Now, as we move through to uh, the 10th, well, yep, no change really. The low pressure off the Atlantic is still the driving influence, still bringing in these mild west to uh, southwesterly winds. Things get a little bit more interesting as we go through to the 12th and the 13th. Just signs that high pressure is trying to build up over Scandinavia a little bit, but it's the low pressure in the Atlantic that's driving things really. And uh, we've got mild southerly southwesterly winds pushing in uh, lots of heavy rain as well. Moving through to the middle of the month, again, just the suggestion that high pressure trying to build over Scandinavia. Uh, the low pressure is in the ascendancy, though, in the Atlantic, and that's bringing in more heavy bouts of rain and those mild southerly to southwesterly winds. Very similar pattern, this, actually, to what we've just been experiencing through January 2014, with the high pressure trying to build over Scandinavia, but not being able to influence uh, the weather. The low pressure is the driver, uh, with this very strong polar vortex displaced southwards into the Atlantic. Um, and that really is an indication that weather pattern is a little bit abnormal. It's not a classic sort of zonal signal, this, with high pressure up over Scandinavia. It just maybe is the first sort of hints uh, that something a little bit different is happening this winter. It's not a classic westerly zonal winter. Nevertheless, as we go through to the 17th of December, at uh, 86, that high pressure has uh, gone. It's moved back northwards again uh, from Scandinavia. But westerlies are really driving in there. And, uh, yeah, it's the Atlantic that is very much in the ascendancy. 
Moving through to the 20th, just a little bit of a change, a couple of uh, days of colder weather. We actually reach a bit of high pressure in the Atlantic this time and start to pull down this colder northwesterly, uh, sort of northerly wind. So, yep, it does turn a bit colder for a few days. Here we are on the 22nd of December and uh, we're bringing a few snow showers into the north and the east of the country. Uh, it's not particularly cold, not severely cold, but it is colder than it's been pretty much. But there's a lot of night frost as well. But this is important really because this low pressure here across. Uh, the Baltic, that's moving southwards. It got very cold air with it. So this is already beginning to lay the groundwork, uh, building up that cold air to the northeast. It's already starting to lay the groundwork uh, for what's going to happen and what's going to be important in uh, January. As we move through to the 24th of uh, December, Christmas Eve, we're trying to build a ridge of high pressure over Scandinavia again. So these repeated attempts to build high pressure over Scandinavia, certainly an indication that something's going on with the atmosphere. It's not a classic westerly zonal month in that the westerlies are driving through Scandinavia into Russia by any means. So definitely signs that something's happening. And this high pressure in the Atlantic is trying to reach to that high over Scandinavia. But it's not going to be able to. As we go through to Christmas Day, everything starts collapsing. We bring the westerly through across the British Isles. It turns milder but wetter uh, once again. As we go through to Boxing Day uh, 1986, again, it's the low pressure in the Atlantic that's driving things, uh, so it's not particularly cold, it's quite mild, and it is unsettled. And that's how we go through to the end of uh, December 86, actually. Again, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. Have got a lot of cold air over Scandinavia and uh, western parts of Russia. Cold air is entrenched there now uh, from that earlier cold spell that occurred uh, around the 20th, 22nd of December. So it was important that cold spell started things off in terms of building up the cold pool. But it's still the Atlantic that's driving things as we move through to New Year's Eve 1986. And it is as we go through to New Year's Day 1987 as well. The low pressure again is driving in off the Atlantic, being more uh, wet conditions, quite a, quite a wet uh, New Year's Day this one, and not particularly cold. Again, the cold pool is up to the northeast, it's waiting, it's lurking. You can probably uh, imagine the thing tune from Jaws sort of uh, churning away there up to the northeast with that cold pool but it's the Atlantic that's still driving in on the 1st of January and um, that's how we go through the first five days of the month actually with quite mild westerly winds across most parts of the country and that explains why despite having the coldest single spell of weather since uh 1740. Uh, it's not a particularly severely cold month. It is a very cold month. It has a central temperature of uh, plus 0 0.8. Um, but it's not as cold as, say, December uh, 2010 or February 86. Um, and it's the reason for that is that we have this mild opening and then it turns milder at the end of the month as well. It's, but it's that single spell of weather. And you're going to see the charts for it in a moment, don't worry, we'll get to them. It's that single spell of weather through the middle of the month uh, that is really quite extraordinary. Now, this is the uh, upper air temperatures. These are the upper air temperatures, I should say, uh, for uh, the 5th of January 1987. Very extensive and severe cold pool across Scandinavia and western parts of Russia, extending down into uh, eastern parts of Europe as well. But western Europe is still relatively mild, actually. It hasn't yet uh, turned cold. But that cold pool, as I say, it's lurking. It's sitting there. It's waiting uh, for its chance. And as we go through to the 7th of January, now the atmosphere begins to put everything in place. We've got the cold pool to the northeast, and we're starting to get this build of high pressure developing around the British Isles as we send warm air advection uh, from the Atlantic up into Greenland and when you get these southerly winds extending warm air from the Atlantic into Greenland it's usually a signal that you're going to build high pressure to the east of it usually over either Iceland or Scandinavia uh, that's what's happening here uh, we're starting to send that warm air advection into the Arctic consequently we're pushing down this high pressure from the Arctic into the north of Scandinavia and this high pressure over which ours is eventually going to end up over Scandinavia as well. Moving through to the 8th of January, again, the building blocks are in play, we're uh, sort of slotting everything into place. It's still not particularly cold yet, it's sort of a grey, grim sort of spell of weather, really, lots of low cloud, maybe uh, a lot of fog as well, could be frosty if the skies are clear, but the cold air, the severe cold air, is still lurking uh, to the northeast. 
But as we go through to uh, the 9th of January, now things are getting going. Yep, we're starting to lose that high pressure over us. That's beginning to decline away as this main area of high pressure uh, coming out of, the, uh, out of the Arctic extends nicely down into uh, northern parts of Scandinavia and western Russia. Look how cold the cold pool is now up to the northeast. Minus 30 at 850 HPA across western parts of Russia and extending through in towards Finland and uh, parts of Sweden and the Baltic Sea as well. Really, really uh, severely uh, cold air. You don't see uh, cold coming into Europe on that scale very often, I can uh, tell you that. As we move through to the 10th of January 1987, well now, yep, the low pressure is uh, slipping away to the south, or we've got a bit of trough slipping away to the south. Uh, the high pressure is firmly in place over Scandinavia, now at 1,035 millibars. The easterly winds are starting to extend. It's already turning cold in the east. Temperatures on the 10th of January 87 uh, didn't get above freeze across eastern England, although the severest cold air is still away to the east, but we've got some snow showers running down the east coast, and temperatures are struggling uh, to get above freezing now going through to the 11th of january 1987 which is sunday and this is when it all starts to kick off yep we've got the high pressure firmly in place over uh scandinavia 1040 millibars we've got low pressure over italy and central parts of the mediterranean that's always a good uh, signal if you want an easy wing it's always good to have low pressure over italy because it's going to start to pull those wings in from the east the gradient between the high pressure and the low pressure will mean that the isobars tighten and that can extend not only the cold but also the snow showers in across the country now this day uh, the 11th of january 1987 was when john keckley uh, did the weekend forecast and famously started uh, his forecast uh, as he recounts in his fantastic uh, autobiography which is called weatherman if you haven't uh, brought that yet do check it out it's a fantastic autobiography uh, but famously he starts the uh, forecast uh, on the 11th of the January 1987 uh, by saying that uh, the only bright spot in this forecast is going to be the tie uh, that he's wearing and uh, it's one of those classic lines that started the forecast uh, from John Keckley. Um, I remember it well, I was only little, I was only around uh, uh, 10, uh, I was under 10 actually, I was 9 years old uh, when this happened but I remember that opening line of that forecast, very uh, funny line but this is driving in severely cold air into eastern parts of the country now. And uh, that's the point John was trying to get across in his week air forecast. It's going to be a severely cold week. Possibly uh, the coldest of the 20th century. Uh, maybe longer ago than that. And also that there's going to be huge amounts of snow uh, driving in. This is a classic lake effect sort of snow scenario with this very severely cold air coming across the North Sea. Uh, the North Sea is cold normally, but it's warm compared to this, uh, so it does create uh, the potential for that lake effect snow. So the snow is already starting to uh, develop on the eastern side of the country here on the 11th. We're bringing in that cold pool. Temperatures are widely uh, below freezing, and uh, yeah, the snow is already starting to penetrate in across eastern parts of the country. Now, as we go through to the 12th of January 87, this is a very historic day. It's probably uh, the coldest day of the 20th century. It's certainly the coldest day of the 20th century. Um, probably the coldest day across England and Wales since January 17. 40. We are bringing in copious amounts of snow to eastern parts of the country. It's really piling up uh, 40, uh, 40, 50 centimetres of snow to, uh, down the east coast quite widely. But I think it's the temperatures that are actually more extraordinary than most parts of the country. The snow is very memorable in the east. It did disrupt everything. It uh, brought 300 trains to a standstill. It piled up uh, on the eastern side. But those temperatures are quite extraordinary here. We have widely uh, maximums of minus 5 or minus 6. Some places not getting above minus 7. And in rural localities, no doubt, uh, we're stuck uh, with maximum temperatures on the 12th of January 1987 around minus 8 Possibly uh, one or two places not getting above minus 9 degrees. An extraordinary, severely cold uh, day indeed with this easterly wind driving in uh, that bitterly cold air uh, from the east. Look at this cold pool uh, that we've got coming across the country. Uh, we've 
we're well within the minus 15 isotherm, 850 HPA. We've got minus 20 uh, at 850 HPA heading into eastern parts of the country. I think the lowest was around minus 21 or minus 22 across southeastern parts of England. This is upper air temperatures. Uh, and that's why the daytime maximums were so cold, didn't get above, I uh, say widely didn't get above, minus 5, minus 6 degrees. But some places uh, were pegged down at minus 7, minus 8. I know Gatwick recorded a maximum on uh, this day of time for January of uh, just minus 7. So it was an extraordinary, historic, severely cold spell, cold few days. And uh, the snow just goes on as we move through to the 13th. We're driving in those easy winds. Good and proper. Look at that very strong easy wind coming in, spreading snow across many parts of the country. We did have snow here where I am in Northamptonshire. It doesn't really stand out in the memory as being uh, huge sort of drifts of snow, unlike what we had, uh, say, in 1982 and uh, again 1985. Um, doesn't stand out as being that bad, but it was snowy. Uh, but it's the cold. I remember the cold uh, being so so severe uh, through these days, the 12th, the 13th. Uh, of January 1987 and funnily enough our uh, patio door uh, that we had at home actually lifted up off its uh, runners they've got so much ice underneath it it lifted up and just dropped off and uh, we had to spend several hours on uh, this day either the 12th 13th can't remember the exact day but we had to spend several hours uh, without the uh, patio door uh, that was very very cold I can tell you it was bundled up in, in coats and scarves and gloves but it was still extraordinarily cold sitting there uh, waiting for somebody come and put the uh, door back on and they eventually did turn up but uh, really quite uh, quite an experience that one was look at the upper air temperatures again on the 13th of January again we're widely below minus 15 some places uh, down to what, minus 17 uh, minus 18 at uh, 850 HPA very severely uh, cold once again now as we move through to the 14th, the uh, coldest, the worst of weather starts to moderate. We're going to bring in slightly less cold sort of southeasterly winds. And that's really the worst of the winter. Uh, golden then, we've still got a very extensive cold pool, so it's still snowing across many parts of the country. Snow really piling up again in the uh, eastern areas. Uh, but yeah, things are going to gradually improve a little bit then as we move through uh, in towards the uh, middle of the month. We're going to still bring in an easy wind, still bitterly cold, still on a surface cold but the upper air temperatures are going to moderate with a big uh, increase in fact in the terms of the upper air temperatures in the second half of that week uh, did occur and that just allowed things to get a little bit more sensible instead of having uh, maximums of minus 7, minus 8 uh, we started to have maximums of say minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 still bitterly cold, still cold enough, still snowing don't worry, it was, there was still snow showers around um, but not the severe uh, cold, the silly cold of earlier in the week. Things did start to improve. And then really as we go through into the second half of January, it's basically a case of keeping high pressure going then. So uh, we shift from the wind and the storm and the severe cold to sort of a frosty, foggy spell of weather, lots of low cloud. Uh, so the snow that fell did continue to lay uh, through much of this period. Um, it lay quite deep. Uh, particularly in the east, uh, which had really ground to a halt actually, down the east coast things have really come to a uh, standstill and uh, I think in some places actually down the east coast the army had to be called in uh, to uh, drop food from helicopters and that sort of thing uh, do emergency sort of supplies to people down the east coast but still piled up uh, so much but that was on the actual coast, many areas or just in from the coast uh, many areas hadn't had it back bad in terms of the style though I say there was a lot of snow around and it was laying under this cold area high pressure and the high pressure just goes on then as we go through towards the latter stages of the month it starts to reposition we bring some uh, slightly less cold air from the Atlantic around the top so a slow fall uh, begins to take place and uh, we end January actually with high pressure still more or less dominating the weather. We do have another go at bringing some very cold air in from the northeast on the 28th. That's quite interesting. That high pressure going back up towards Iceland and Greenland. Really severely cold, extensive cold pull up to the northeast again. So maybe very close to opening the floodgates to another severe spell and that would have really uh, hit the country very very badly but it didn't come off at uh, that time and actually the high press just stayed more or less over the country keeping that severely cold air away to the northeast of the 
of the, the country over Scandinavia and northern parts of Russia. Just want to give you the run of temperatures that they had at uh, Gatwick Airport uh, from the 7th to the 20th of January. We had uh, on the 7th, 0 degrees, uh, the 8th, minus 2, uh, the 9th, plus 1, uh, the 10th, minus 1, uh, the 11th, minus 5, the 12th, that historic day, Monday the 12th of January 1987, a maximum of Gatwick of minus 7 degrees, uh, same on the 13th, minus 7, and then the cold moderate, still very cold, uh, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus 3, minus 3, minus 1, still severely cold, still plenty cold enough uh, for London, um, but not the dreadful cold that we had on the 12th and the 13th, which were probably, as I say, the two coldest days, uh, or certainly the coldest day uh, of the 20th century, quite probably uh, the coldest day since 1740. Finally, a quick look at February, just in case you want to see what happened in February 87. It starts off on quite a mild note, actually. Uh, we bring these southwest winds in, so all of the snow goes early uh, February 87, but it turns cold again as we move through towards the middle of the month. We extend this high pressure down uh, from uh, Greenland and Iceland, a weak area of high pressure, admittedly. This low pressure to the south producing some snow Nothing like what happened in January 87, uh, though. And as we move through towards the uh, 22nd of February, well, again, it's still quite cold. High pressure is more or less around. Quite a dry wind to this one once we uh, lost that mild uh, Atlantic-driven December. January and February, quite dry, to be honest, with lots of anticyclonic influences. But it's cold. Uh, we're bringing winds generally from a northerly direction, but not the severe cold of the uh, earlier uh, in the winter through that January. We end February 87 with Atlantic winds then starting to extend back in. So we end the winter on a mild note. Gets cold again as we go through into March. Uh, March 1987, quite an interesting month because it had a central England temperature of the... Uh, what was central England temperature in March 87? Let's just have a look. It had a central England temperature of plus 4.1. Up to that point, it was the coldest uh, March for quite a long while. I think the coldest probably since 1962 or 1970. We've beaten that with March 2013, and I want to do a historic video about March 2013. As soon as the historic archive updates at West Central, I will do March 2013. It was colder than this month, March 87. But nevertheless, this March was a cold month, and you're going to see why. It's because the Scandinavian high comes back, basically. We build pressure over Scandinavia again in the opening days, and we start to bring in... Uh, and easterly to south east from that's got cold air coming with it also bringing weather fronts here on the 6th of march 87 so we've got snow coming into that cold air uh, once again now this day the 6th of march 1987 very sad day uh, because the herald of free enterprise uh, sank at zeebrugge um, as it left zeebrugge uh, killing quite a few people so a very sad uh, day it wasn't weather related um, but a sad day uh, nonetheless but it was a cold day the 6th and 7th did have snow quite wide across the country didn't get into the far east but many areas did have outbreaks of snow with weather fronts growing to a halt and this area of high pressure over Scandinavia again bringing that cold air in so the pattern that we had in January starts to repeat in March to a modified effect, uh, we uh, haven't got the severe cold, of course, because it's March rather than January. Um, but nevertheless, it's cold spell uh, with easterly winds uh, dominating the first half of the month. There was snow around in many places as well. Uh, we go through to the 21st of March, 87, with this cold area of low pressure around the country. Uh, so that's producing more uh, outbreaks of rain, sleet and snow at times. And we end March 87 actually bringing milder winds in uh, from the Atlantic. But it was a very cold uh, month, I say. Up to them, the coldest since 1970 or 1962, depending on where you happen to be in the, the country. Um, but beaten, of course, by uh, March 2013. And I will do that historic video for March 2013 as soon as the charts appear at Wet Central. So that's what happened in 1987. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it brought back a few memories. The uh, severest single spell of weather uh, since uh, 1740 across much of England, where certainly the coldest or the lowest daytime maxima uh, since 1740. Very, very historic and uh, nasty spell of weather. 
or a very nice spell of weather if you like it cold uh, and I know quite a few of you watching this video do like it cold that's it for now hope you enjoyed the video uh, thanks for watching bye for now